It's cooler, cooler than Antarctica weather would be. Damn, I think my swagger is a weapon to me. And dudes, dudes, don't count you off the record to me. So don't be stepping to me. Trying to shake my hand. I'm already the man. Ain't trying to make your band. I feel the fact that I'm real. Just make them mad. I be smoking helium to inflate my swirl. The fact that I'm real. Just make them mad. I be smoking helium to inflate my swirl. I'm fly. Yes. I'm high. Yes. Every lady wanna get to this guy. Yes. Go out tonight. I just mind. Yes. Sell cleaner than yours, so don't buy. Yes. I'm so deaf in there. So, so deaf in there. I'm so deaf in there. So, so deaf in there. I'm so deaf in there. So, so deaf in there. I'm so deaf in there. So, so deaf in there. You're not really seeing me, dog. Real talk. You feeling wacker than you ever would be. In my mind, you think you. What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you guys for being here. Um, I have my guests backstage, so I don't want to take too long. So let's take care of the business of this channel. Uh, first, if you want to join my tribe, please give it my site. Go ahead and subscribe. Turn on your notifications. Make sure you turn them on all so you get notified every time I go live. Like the video, share the video, comment in the comment section to keep me in the algorithm. Um, let's play the intro and this. Let's go ahead and get into it, y'all. Let's go. Star move. I'm fly, yes, I'm high, yes, every day you want to get to this guy, yes, go out tonight, I just mind, yes, sell cleaner than yours, so don't buy, yes, I'm so deaf in there, so, so deaf in there, I'm so deaf in there, so, so deaf in there, I'm so deaf in there, so, so deaf in there, I'm so deaf in there, so, so deaf in there. Jazz. What's up? What's up? What's up? Bro? What's going on? <laughs> How you feeling? I am good, man. I'm so happy to be here with you right now. I am so happy to be here. As, yes. soon, as soon as I had the opportunity to hop on, I was like immediately, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, like, I'm so excited about this. Um, like I was telling you behind the stage, like, I'm super excited about this because there's so much I want to talk to you about, man. And, um, to me, like, I don't know if you feel this way, but this was like one of the best seasons for me. Yeah. To just see what the dynamics were this season was very different than any other season for me. What do you, so dynamics, like, what do you mean between the cast, the personalities? I mean, you came in like hot. Like, I mean, like <laughs> the, 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 what is it? The, um, uh, I can't think of the word now. Um, the alliances like they came in like at the very beginning yeah and like you were like on the top like for most of the time like yeah we've never really seen that on the show and this wasn't like a catfishing season no which i appreciated so much <laughs> i was shocked about that i was so shocked for me i felt like at the round table the only shot obviously was um was jennifer but i was happy that uh, each person kind of came in as themselves because I'm not a catfish hunter. I don't care if you a catfish. I could connect with anybody or anything. Mm -hmm. um, but to see people show up as like their authentic selves, that to me was like a game changer. Well, I mean, Jennifer showed up as themselves. They just got kicked off. Like the <laughs> yeah, that part. <laughs> <laughs> so before we jump into the show, uh, let's learn a little bit about you. Um, first, like, tell us about you. Like, um, you were in school for nursing, and then you switched up and um, became a shampoo poppy. Um, tell us about that. So, um, I was shampoo poppy before uh, okay. nursing school. Um, okay. So, I've been an entrepreneur for five and a half years now. Mm -hmm. um, nursing school has been like um, a thing that I have been chasing for many years. As everybody know, it's like a, a dedication and honor for my brother. Mm -hmm. um, but super happy to finally let everybody know now that I graduate nursing school in two weeks. Um, oh, thank you so much. I'm super happy about that. Um, but Shampoo Poppy kind of uh, was a blessing for me in disguise because I was in um, chasing nursing school for so long and I was just like, praying to God, like, just give me what's for me, you know, give me my own purpose because I love nursing school. 
Um, I'm willing to be a nurse. I know I'm, I'm passionate about helping people, but um, I want to help people in other ways outside of uh, medicine. Gotcha. And God just blessed me with Shea Papapi, and I built that business up like from ground up. And to go from what I went from with a, a box of supplies, washing cars, to now Netflix has just been insane in the most beautiful way. Got you. Okay. Now, I was looking, I looked you up a little bit, and I noticed that you had like a show on uh, Apple TV. Yes. How did that come about? Um, so it was an end of, uh, I started a, a, a production company. And mm -hmm. with that, I, it started out as me just filming a pilot. And I was like, you know what? I think I want to just um, do two more episodes. And I got the opportunity to pitch it to iTunes, um, who then picked it up and distributed it to Apple TV. Mm -hmm. So it was an independent project, um, which has just been another like W in my book. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it was very low budget. But now that um, the circle has wrapped up and I'm finishing up nursing school, I'm going to be redoing Shampoo Poppy over again because okay. it is my hopes and prayers that I get a bigger budget to be able to work with a studio now. Okay. So you you, you pitched that to Apple TV? Uh, not to Apple TV directly. I, I pitched it to a, um, a distribution company okay. that, that accepted the project that had connections with iTunes and Apple TV. Got you, got you. Okay. So tell us about your journey on how you ended up on the circle. Oh man, um, when I got the the notifications that um, they were accepting auditions, mm -hmm. I wasn't gonna do it because one, I didn't think that they would call. Mm -hmm. And number two, I had one picture on my Instagram. So I was like, even if they do call me or look at my application, what are they gonna see? Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what, let me just do it. I had got a haircut that day, I was feeling good. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I was like, let me just do it, see what happens. Um, and I put my application in and they, literally called me two weeks later mm. and the, the casting director was like Chaz we love your audition video but you don't got no pictures on your Instagram like Netflix is not gonna accept this I was like okay 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 I'm gonna like you know get better at it you know social media mm. um yeah and that was oh I'm sorry and that was literally my journey on it like applied two weeks later they called and like the rest has been history got you so like are you like instagram person now or i know you're like TikTok is your thing yeah what about like is are you are you an instagrammer as well now yeah like i've always been on at the time when i had one photo i was rebranding mm -hmm. um my whole image on instagram so i wasn't worried about uh social media at the time which is so weird because they want social media focused people for the most part mm -hmm. um and I did not have that at the time. So it was a struggle because I was like, I'm really not trying to be social at the most time when I have to be social. Right, 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 right. But I've definitely built my Instagram up since then, for sure. Okay. So rebranding your Instagram, I'm taking notes. <laughs> All right. So what was your plan when you, when you got um, when you got there on, on the circle? Um, I know you would tell information about your fiance and your job. Um, do you feel like that was the best strategy after it was all said and done? Uh, yeah, for sure. Because I feel like if I would have went into the circle in a relationship when everybody else was single, now I have a disadvantage just in case I had the opportunity to like flirt with somebody, whether it be a boy or a girl, mm -hmm. nobody would take me serious if I'm in a relationship and they're single, then I'd be like a cheater. Let me ask you this. This was, I don't even had this written down, but let me ask you this. Do you think if you were dating, because, you know, uh, what's his name? Melvin? Marvin. Marvin got caught up with that. Do you think that that, that, that would have happened with you on the show? Had mm, you had so nah, I'm too fly for that. Like, I'm too <laughs> fly for that. Yeah, like, I'm not, I'm not messy. I'm very, like, just like how me and, like, Sam was my wifey and nobody knew. Yeah, got that's you. how I move. I'm very low key with my stuff. Like nobody in the street is gonna know my business. So, <laughs> like, okay, got you. <laughs> so I was, I'm like, I mean, you had a big advantage when it came to that because you was just, it was, you was just the husband, and yeah. like no one else was that. Like you were friends with everybody else. Yeah. Um. So that really worked out in your favor. Um. I think that brings me to my next to my next question too. Um. Like your personality, like it just thrived on the show like 
uh, how did that feel for you? Like letting the world see that and then also like going into this space where nobody knows you, but your personality just took off and like people fell in love with you. You know something? It wasn't until after the show came out where it where it was confirmation that like mm -hmm. all I need to do is just be me. I just got to show up as Chaz and that's more than enough. During the filming, I was very unsure about a lot throughout the whole really? process. Yes, I was so unsure about myself. Um, like the first couple of episodes when I was watching it, I'm like, Chaz, why are you so serious? Where's your personality? Like, <laughs> but the first when we first walked in, I was like, I'm so unsure. I don't know how to like approach anybody. So like, let me tap into my more like serious side. Mm. Once I got comfortable in the apartment, I feel like that's when I started to like break out of my um my comfort zone and my shell a little bit. Um, but I'm very happy that people were able to see the true Chaz because I'm I was so proud of my edit from episode one to the end because mm -hmm. I didn't want to look back ten years later and be like, damn, I shouldn't have said that or I shouldn't have did this. It don't it didn't show up that way though. It feel like from day one, like you just knew that and it feel like everybody was just like in love with you. Like, yeah. I mean, even when it came down to the voting, like it was like, you were it. Like, I'm like, this guy got it. This is over for everybody else. Nobody even has a chance. Yeah. Yeah, you know, when I was there, it didn't feel like that. I felt like it was a game. I felt like, nah, y'all trying to play me. Like, <laughs> y'all, <laughs> I just become an influencer back to back. Like, y'all about to like, the circle gonna do something twisted and get me blocked. I'm like, nah, <laughs> it ain't no way. This is too good to be true. <laughs> um, I just had a question now. I did not write down, but I was gonna ask you something from what you just said. Um, oh, I just lost it. I'll think about it later. Um, so when it came to your alliances, were these just like genuine alliances? Was this strategic? Like, how did these come about? Because you had a lot with not really saying you had a lot. Every alliance that I had, like, was through and through from my heart. Like, mm -hmm. each person that I could, like, Sam and Raven, obviously the world knows that. Like, right. not up for discussion. But the people that I don't think people... Um, to clarify that question, because that's a really good question. Um, Bruno, mm. would if Bruno never got would have never gotten blocked outside of uh Sam and Raven winning, Bruno would be the third person I would want to see win outside of me, Sam and Raven. Cause I just love Bruno so much. And I think the world got to see that mm. um when she walked in my room. Um, so that connection was so genuine even with marvin it was genuine because i was upset like i wanted him to make it to the couch so when he didn't i was like in my in my in my apartment i was heartbroken because i was so connected with him um yeah everybody i had a genuine connection with meant the world yeah, so me. one of my subscribers said uh that's why i was surprised sam one chance uh was an influencer every four or five times i think like yeah you were an influencer like for the most part i mean you never did you ever hit below five? Um, no, I hit four. Yeah, that's what I thought. Like, you has that ever happened in circle history? No, I I'm the I, and shout out to this, but <laughs> being the first black male <laughs> in circle history to be influenced that many times is like epic. Um, I tied with Shoe Bomb. Shoe Bomb has been an influencer four times in one season as well. Mm -hmm. We're gonna get to shoe bomb a little bit later. Oh, <laughs> Because I, I I was not feeling shoe bomb coming back. Not I didn't like shoe bomb, but shoe bombs uh catfish profile. I didn't like it. Uh, but I feel like you guys had the best um alliances, like even with, with between um you, Raven, Sam, and Marvin. Um, I'm like, man, this is like it doesn't feel forced. It feels like y'all really like each other. Um, and I, I was like, it, it just seemed very genuine. And I'm like, they're going to ride to the end because, I mean, they it feels like they really like each other. And, again, there was no real, like, catfishing. So whether they were catfish or not, because y'all had that relationship, it wouldn't have been really matter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's my next question? I'm going to ask that one later. Um 
I think I well, I said everyone thought that you were going to win before the last episode. What did you think about that? About not winning? What did you think about as you were going? Well, I know you just said like you didn't feel that way at the beginning, but as the show went on, you kept realizing that you were like one of the top influencers. You didn't go below five. Like, how did you feel? Like, did you feel like I got this in the bag? Like, what was your thought process? Um, it was it was scary because like I I'm a I'm a semi-confident person about myself, but when you are put in a competition like this, you never want to be too sure. So for me, I was just like, I just hope these people are voting me as top influencer because they genuinely like me. I hope that there's no like motives about it. Cause yeah, like it's gonna make you feel good that you're top rated, but you never want it, you don't want it to uh like fill your ego up. Right. Because the second you you fill your ego up somebody's gonna play you and then you're gonna be shocked and like i just didn't want that to happen to me um but i was happy that people trusted me and liked me i was thankful for that i was so grateful because i could have been blocked <laughs> you know i could have came in eighth and True. on the ratings i never left top three from start to end never yeah. so i was grateful i feel like they didn't really have a choice between you raven marvin and sam like you didn't really have a choice but to be up there. Yeah. Well, I, we, me, Sam, and Raven weren't letting anybody break us for nothing. Yeah. We were the big three from day one, and um, we wasn't gonna let nobody like break our alliance. Once we started that, it was a wrap. Like, it was getting to the point in the show where I feel like the other contestants kind of felt like if you can't beat them, join them because y'all not breaking them up for nothing. Do you feel like that with Marvin? In the beginning, well, when Marvin was um a part of Team Melanin, yeah. And that's why when um when Raven blocked him at first, at first I, initially I was shocked because I was like, no, like we could have used him possibly in some way. Like, yeah, like, well, you could have used him, but for me, like I was genuinely um connected with Marvin. Right. Um, but it didn't go that way. Uh, but I still wanted Marvin on the couch no matter what. <laughs> I did too. I, I was a little upset about that. <laughs> <laughs> I was really upset about that, but I guess I feel like, although you like y'all were speculating catfishes, like where was I? Feel like there should have been some kind of okay, you know what? This is still a game show. Let us not x Marvin out because of the whole thing with him and uh, Raven and Tamira. Yes, because if y'all are okay with the catfish. He's playing the game just like everybody else. Yeah. So I that this was like, I, I, it blew my mind. I was like, now come on, y'all. Now seriously, I mean, he had to pick, and he didn't get to pick who he went to on a date with. That's true. So, I mean, and if he did, I mean, I feel like he was playing the game. I do feel like he messed up with not saying anything to Raven, but. Yeah. It was still a game, though, you know. So, so to your point, yes, it was a game, but Marvin played a horrible game in terms of how he played that situation out. Like Marvin had two opportunities um, in the which one, the savage questions mm -hmm. when everybody was coming for him. Like, you know, are you using these women for the ratings? Are you using these women to stay in the circle? He had the opportunity to say right there, like, Raven, you're my queen. You're my number one. Whatever it was to have to like clean that situation up to win Raven back. He didn't do that. So, but I feel like he didn't know what to say because it was like, I mean, if I say this, this could be wrong. If I say this, this could be wrong. Like it could just damage the entire thing. So if I don't say anything, then maybe this they won't talk about it or whatever. And then when Tamir came in, it was like really late too. So it was like, well, oh, so I get that. But I, when you're in the circle, mm -hmm. you have to make every conversation and every opportunity count because you don't you don't know when they're going to pull the ratings up on you so right. you have to say what you need to say right now because if you don't and they throw the ratings up everybody's going to judge you based off of what just happened and not what's what they think is going to happen later so like every interaction you have you have to make it count because if you don't then people are going to judge you for what's happening in the circle and not uh so much about your who you are as a person or your character. I just wish he would never talk to Tom. Yeah. <laughs> because honestly, I feel like had that conversation ever happened, he probably would have been cool. 
Yeah, and that's why I was like, I was confused because I didn't know Tom um, went and spoke to Raven about mm -hmm. that situation because I felt like, all right, this is my best friend. If anything, like, that's the conversation I'm supposed to have with her. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, Tom is so caught up on Marvin and Tamara, but yet you omitted this information about Sasha starting this rebellion, which was way more dangerous than Marvin flirting with two girls. Like, right. we got bigger fish to fry, you know? Like, <laughs> right. And I feel like Tom was pretty, I mean, to me, I feel like he was like on the edge of, am I in, am I here or am I not here? Like with every, whoever's here. Yeah. Um, I feel like, may, I don't think, I don't know if people, maybe you can answer this for me. Did, did they feel the, did they know about the alliance between you guys or like, do you feel like they, it was known to them? Yeah. Yes. Um, they didn't know uh, we were a, like the big three. They just knew that um, me and Raven were really close and me and Sam were really close, but they didn't know we were an alliance as the big three, uh, as we call it anyway. No one knew that okay. until until uh, until in the savage questions when I think Shubham asked Sam, who do you want to see go to the um, the couch? And mm -hmm. Sam said, Chaz, Raven, Jennifer. And that's when everyone found out. Speaking of Jennifer, um, why did y'all buy into that? Because I- Jenny Jen. I'm I like, she's like, I'm Auntie Jen, Auntie Jen. I'm like, this just sounds fake to me. Like, I, it just, it's too much Auntie Jen for me. What do you know? So <laughs> You know, so I think I don't know because we all were like bamboozled by Jennifer. Um, <laughs> when I watched when I watched the like the season back, I'm like, yo, she had us fooled because we none of us could have ever guessed that that was not Jennifer. Yeah, none of us could have ever guessed that that was not Jennifer. That was the yeah. biggest surprise to me. And I guess watching it versus being there may be the big difference. But I'm like, yeah. she's just Auntie Jen and me too much. Like. Yeah, it, it just does. I'm not giving it's not giving authentic to me. It's giving like I just want to be here and I'm trying to stay here by any means necessary, basically. Well, so I'm gonna be this sweet Auntie Jen. And I mean, even and then I guess watching it, knowing who Auntie Jen was, it kind of you know that made me feel like man, like y'all are getting played. <laughs> you know, something like I think. So when I think about it, I, I put myself in like that situation where it's like, every time I talk to Raven, mm -hmm. bestie this, bestie that. Mm -hmm. Like we just address each other as bestie. Same thing with like Sam, everything was wifey or gubby. Mm -hmm. um, so everybody came up with like these nicknames. So uh, Auntie Jen, uh, addressing herself as Auntie Jen was just another filtered nickname that just kind of matched up with everyone else who had a nickname. So we never paid any attention to it because we all addressed each other as our names, Whitey, gotcha. Gubby, Auntie Jen, um, uh, Daddy Bruno. Mm -hmm. So um, it all just got filtered into that. She swept, she like literally, she came in at the perfect time and just slid that Auntie J under the rug and we all fell for it. <laughs> but I feel like y'all's was more genuine than that. Like I feel like y'all talked more from what we've seen on the show. Uh, I feel like she just talked when like she needed to talk to you guys. Uh, yeah, so the parts that did not make it to the show, especially um, I know for me and for Sam, Sam and uh, Jennifer had a real relationship from okay. day one when um, Auntie Jen came. They had a real relationship. Um, mm -hmm. And then there were so many like private conversations that I had with Jennifer that changed the narrative in so many other places. And it didn't make the show. And I'm like, damn, like, I wish they would have showed this and I wish they would have showed that. But we fell into Auntie J's trap and we all hate it. <laughs> but she played a good game. Zanthi and Brett played Auntie J to a T. Yeah, I'm like, I'm, we're watching this and I'm like, somebody has to understand that this is fake. Like, it just seemed, I didn't feel like y'all was like giving as much as she was giving watching the show versus, you know, seeing you guys' relationship. It just, it just seemed more genuine versus, I feel like y'all would call each other like, I mean, you know, challenge each other because y'all just wanted to talk. She was calling because like y'all had to make a decision. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I can get that. Yeah. I think I think from like a viewer's point, like I can really, really understand that. But mm -hmm. we had some genuine moments with Jen. Like we had some genuine moments. And I think when you align me, Sam, and Raven together, like all three of us are just very open-minded people. We're not 
nasty people. We're not people that we all just give people the benefit of the doubt mm -hmm. from the jump. And that's our problem in real life. We we trust people too much. So for us in the circle, it was just like, okay, you know, this is Auntie Jen. We just, I don't, the thing is with, with me, Sam and Raven, mm -hmm. we would rather not put energy into thinking or figuring out why this person is not genuine because we just expect everybody to show up as their authentic, their authentic self. Right. I'm not wasting my energy trying to figure out if you're not being genuine or not. I would just rather trust you. Yeah, and that's why I said this was like the the greatest season because nobody was catfish and like they was like, wow, if you can be catfish or not, where is your loyalty? At, basically, exactly. Um, I, one of the people said, uh, "How did you feel about how did you feel about being hacked by Jennifer?" Um, so in the beginning, um, it was it's 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 that's such a tough question to answer. Um. Mm -hmm. Because watching the show, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, she was she was using my profile to get Sam to get on her team to block Tamara. So watching the show, I'm like, okay, I can't be mad at that because I was very much open to blocking uh, Tamara. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, Tasia, because I didn't have anything with Tasia at all. I had zero connection with her. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, she didn't use my, my profile in a malicious way. And mm -hmm. that's what was the saving grace for me. If she was using my profile to like um, ruin my own reputation or try to block Raven or try to block Sam, mm -hmm. then yeah, no, we definitely got a problem. But how she was going about using it to get um, Tasia out, I wasn't mad at all because I was actually down to block Tasia. <laughs> I was down gotcha. to block Tasia. So for me, um, I wasn't bothered by it at all. And the, 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 the real shocker for me the real shocker was being confused about who the hacker was. That was the part that was annoying. Why were you confused, though? I mean, I I, I get why you were in the beginning. Was, the di the dialogue. Oh my gosh, the dialogue that did not make it to the show is the part that really has me like, oh my god, like, oh my god. In the I'm beginning, like, we have, yes, we have to be missing something because when y'all had the conversation about it, and you're like, well, she's the only person that we've said that y'all said husband or wifey around like it's obvious so yeah. i'm like we had to have missed something because something. it's not making sense why y'all are not like sold on the fact that she did this yeah so for me in the beginning when that first happened when we was in the group chat i was definitely like okay like jennifer's the hacker mm -hmm. then when she brought oliver up in the mix the dialogue that is not available mm -hmm. is what spun my mind as to why i thought it was oliver but I didn't block Oliver because I thought he was the hacker. I actually didn't care who the hacker was. I was just more so curious about who the hacker actually was. Mm. Um, Jennifer that, really that spun my mind. That was actually one of my questions that I had about Oliver and why you, uh, it says, what made you make your final decision um, with Oliver and not Jennifer? So that was one of my questions. Yeah. So for me, it was a numbers thing. Um, mm. When it came down to the final ratings, mm. It barely had anything to do with the flirting. I didn't care about the flirting. I enjoyed the flirting. It was about numbers. Everybody liked Oliver. And I was like, okay, if I block Jennifer, she's the least liked person in the circle. So mm -hmm. keeping her in boosts my chance to winning $100,000 as compared to keeping the most likable people. Gotcha. So that so keeping Jennifer in was very strategic for me. Mm -hmm. um, Sam and Raven were never up for discussion. So it was always between, it was always between Tasia um, mm -hmm. or Tamara and Oliver. Mm. But I said to myself, Jennifer and Oliver, I mean, Jennifer and uh, Tasia have beef. If I uh, if I block Jennifer, Tasia is going to then block uh, put me fourth in the ratings. Mm. Blocking Oliver forces Tasia to put me third. So to me, this was like my dialogue and my thought process in the final blockings. And that's why I chose to block Oliver, because he had no beef with anybody. Sam liked him. Raven liked him. Um, I don't know if Jennifer really liked him, but and Tasia loved him. So keeping Oliver in was going to throw off the entire ratings. So I had to block him. <laughs> do you think that would have taken over your ratings, though? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I Absolutely. mean, I, I can see that. Like I told you, I, I, I know of Oliver from in, living in Atlanta. He has a, an amazing personality, so I do understand that. Um, but I, I, I just guess because you already kind of had a, a, a place there, Mm. No, no. Um, and then when I was watching the when I was watching the show, Oliver's ratings were so inconsistent. 
each yeah. rating. He never had one specific person at the top. Um, it was always based on who he connected with at that time or right before that ratings. Mm -hmm. um, and then when he was like, oh, he didn't take me on a date? Okay, I'm going to rate him lower. I'm going to rate him lower. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm happy I blocked you. <laughs> all, all of your ratings, and I don't regret it. I don't regret it. Like yeah. people, was on, people on Twitter wanted me to be so, like, uh, involved in their like, oh, you're, you know, you're dumb, you're dumb, you're mad dumb. Like, why did you block Oliver? You would have won. No, I wouldn't have. Did you not see his tweet when he said Chaz was smart for blocking me because I would have rated his ass last? Oh, Oliver see, was very, I, I, Oliver was I, I very strategic. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see that. Oliver, and and for me, um, what I wanted the most from Oliver in terms of his gameplay. Mm. was like everybody had so many opportunities to talk about the rebellion. So when I was watching the show and he was talking to um Sam and Sam was like, Oliver, you my baby brother. Don't get into no drama. Don't get into no nonsense. Like stay out of that shit. I'm like, Oliver, why you ain't tell her about the rebellion right there? Mm. Taysha knew about the rebellion. Why you ain't say nothing about the rebellion? All of these mm. people had all this information that would have changed the dynamics to everything that played out moving forward. Even with Tom. Tom yeah. knew Jennifer was the hacker. I was confused. Sam may have uh, knew, but it was never confirmed. Tom was the only one who really knew who the hacker right. was. Tom ain't say nothing. So for me, I'm like, everybody got information except Chaz. <laughs> so yeah, 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 I got you. <laughs> and, and I guess that's why I think this was like a really good season because you, I mean, I guess watching it and I guess hearing what you're saying, like, we're watching it like, I mean, this is a person that could be in your alliance where, I mean, this is going to boost up yours. But now that you say his uh, ratings were inconsistent, that is that is very true. I do realize that. Because I'm thinking like, well, if y'all would have kept Marvin and y'all would have kept, um, I just got to think real quick, uh, Oliver. That would have kept you at a higher rating, but I mean, if what he said on Twitter is true, then probably not. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why I said I don't regret it. <laughs> I, I don't regret it. Like, people wanted me to be upset about it. I'm like, I'm not. Like, yeah. that, that was my choice. I would, and if I had to make another choice, I would still make the same choice because it was a numbers thing. It was literally a numbers thing. He was liked. Yeah. And, and and this is what I want to do. I don't think that we notice that, though, as viewers. No, y'all do know it because the show is about popularity. The show right. is about popularity. And the point of popularity, and when you when you put popularity up against $100,000, mm. you want the uh, unpopular people in the finale so you can be the only popular one to win. This is not about, at this point, like, my connections were my connections. Sam and Raven weren't up for discussion. I didn't have a relationship with Oliver outside of the flirting. You know, I really had nothing to base that off of, but everybody else liked him. I had to knock him off. Like, that was a competitor of mine. But I don't think we realize that people like Oliver as much as you're saying that we that people like Oliver. because. And then I also think that we all, everybody was just like, even me and my coworker, we watched it together. So we were, uh, well, me and a few of my coworkers, coworkers, we watched it together. And we were all like, I mean, we already know who's going to win. We all thought it was going to be you. Like, there was no question about it. Even when Oliver came, I was like, he came in so late. Even if they liked him, I didn't, I never thought like he would be your competition. Oh, yes. Uh, everybody, you got it. Well, look at season three. When James came in last, he was the last person to come in and then he won. Oh, yeah, true, 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 true. You know, he won. So it's like like everybody is your competition, especially because if you think about it, like in the final ratings, you don't know how people are going to vote. Mm -hmm. So they, the, everybody could have turned their backs and said, uh, Chaz has been winning from start to end. He's probably going to win. Let's all vote him last. But I think when Shubham came in and the whole thing about the, the rebellion thing came in, and that was people were like, Mm -mm. Like I, I just think that viewing, you know, as not a person on the show versus yeah. you guys, it, it looks different. Yeah, it watching it and being there are like two different experiences. Yeah. It's like it's two different experiences. Um, so watching it, like I was like, yo, I don't remember. Like not that I don't <laughs> remember it happening that way, but I know damn well. <laughs> I know damn well. Like. 
I ain't gonna say too much of it because I can't talk about like the editing, final editing and stuff. Mm. But that did not happen like that. <laughs> <laughs> it just seemed like you were like the fan favorite and everybody loved you and there was no way possible that you were not gonna win. Like the end result was shocking to me. But I also understood why Sam won though. So how did you feel about that? Um, I didn't really feel anything but happiness when Sam won. Um, mm -hmm. for, because I didn't really think that I would win anyway. Um, I was just happy to have made it to the couch. Um, so when I was standing there with Sam and it was just me and her, I'm like, I can either win this right now and this will change so much of my life or I could see someone who I love with my whole heart have the same immediate blessing. And when Sam won, I knew for me, I said, like I was so happy with uh, the wins that I collected throughout the show mm. that I made such an impact on so many people. And for me, that, that was my win. So I don't really feel like I lost much of anything because I've gained a friend for life who needed that money immediately um, for her situation, her circumstances. And, um, I know that internally God was just saying, be patient because you've already won yours and more, much more to come. Right. Much more to come. So I felt nothing but happiness for Sam. Cause I didn't even think I was going to win <laughs> for real. <laughs> and that's crazy. We, I'm telling you like my, I used to wake up like before work, I get up at like five o'clock in the morning. I would watch, I'd be late sometimes, but I will watch in the morning time so I can go to work and talk, talk to my coworker about it. And she was like, oh, I didn't get to watch it yet. We would watch during our breaks, like to, to see who's where, what's happening. And um, she, I, matter of fact, I told her, I was like, I'm interviewing Jazz tonight. She was like, oh my God, I want to come. I was like, you can't come to my house, but I, you can watch, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you're not going to be in my house, like, but you could, you know, you can watch whatever. But she was like, she was like, when I had, because I watched the last episode before she watched it. She was like, I already know she has one. I was like. And she couldn't, she was like, well, who won? And then when she watched it during the break, she was like, I understand actually why she won for real though. So I thought it was, I thought that was dope that she did win. Um, to just kind of see even her reaction to her winning, it was like mind changing, you know? Yeah. Because I feel like she definitely did deserve it, but to also know that like it was something that was like needed for her was made it even better, you know. Yeah, so. and that was, and I think um, her sharing that moment of like that type of passion with the world, yeah, was just um, a peephole into her life and a peephole into why uh, she deserved that money. I mean, we all have we all have our stories, um, right. and I think we all deserve to win in our own ways everybody who was blocked right yeah. but and i don't think it was more about who was um most deserving mm -hmm. i just think it was about who needed that money right here right now yeah who needed that money right here right now and um sam's story her whole story wasn't even shared mm -hmm. you know to the audience mm -hmm. so we felt it even more because we heard the the, the raw version of her story um right. so it really meant a lot but not only myself but for everybody to witness that um, mm. and I'm so happy. I'm happy for my wife. You know, we talk every day. It hasn't been a day yeah. since we talked. Since I've been seeing y'all on, I've been seeing the three of y'all on TikTok, you, her, and uh, Raven. Like, yeah, I mean, I think about Instagram a lot. So, yeah, tell me about that relationship between you guys. Like, after this is over with, like, what is that like? Um, we're all business partners. Um, okay. so at all things social media, we work together with, mm. um, we iron out deals with each other. Um, we don't make any social media uh, moves without the approval of the group. Okay. Um, we break bread together. We have a real, not only friend relationship, but a professional working entrepreneurial relationship because we want to see each other win. Um, you know, Salam, Sam collected her coin of 100,000 and still made a way for us to be put on for other things for us to make money and have other opportunities and vice versa if i come across something i put it in the chat raven she puts it in the chat so um mm -hmm. we love our relationship and it's only getting better it's only getting stronger mm -hmm. um I, I i couldn't have asked for a better group of friends 
I can tell. I mean, you can just see the genuineness of you guys' relationship when I see you guys on Instagram. Like, those are real friends for real. Like, yeah. y'all move as a unit. Like, you yep. can just tell that. Like, if I ever got into any trouble, the mm. first person I'm calling is Sam. Because she's going to be the first person to put, <laughs> she's going to be the first one to bail me out. <laughs> if I'm having an anxiety attack or I'm, I'm like, if I'm like just going through something, first person mm. I'm calling, Raven. You know, mm. like, we mesh so well. And we're always on like a, um, a group FaceTime. We mm. always do our check-ins about what's going on in our social media worlds and our um, brand deals. I would never ever, I would never say um, I won't ever have another group of friends like this, but I just cannot compare this relationship to any other relationship that I have. Mm. Um, because we went through that experience together and the fact that we're still here two years later, mm. It's, it was never for TV. Even while being on the circle, it wasn't even for the circle. It was always us. You can you can tell you can literally tell <laughs> yeah. you know, from the show. Like you could tell that. I'm like, if they could have all three been catfish, and that still probably would have been the same way. Yo, for real. For <laughs> real. And imagine that. Imagine we all three was catfishes. Like yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we talked about something before we got onto the live, but I wanted to talk about, you know, the representation of the LGBT. Uh, can, uh, LGBTQIA plus community, um, and especially the black community that Netflix shows on this show. What does that mean to you? It means everything. You know, when I um after the circle dropped, mm -hmm. the first person I contacted from the whole circle crew was Courtney. Okay, and I told Courtney, and I um uh, from in every gay person that's been on the circle, I've always said thank you because without each gay person, whether black or white. Y'all have opened up yet another door for the next person to come through. Yeah. Um, I gravitated to Courtney and I and I sent him a, a long message just um, thanking him for being unapologetic about who he is. And it's because of him and Chris and Matt Papadia and Lee um, and so and Daniel and so on and so and Frank. I love Frank. Um, so on and so on. All of them is why I'm on season five, you know. Yeah. And and then 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 one day it'll be because of me and and whatever impact that I had will be because for the next person on season six. So gratitude um, uh, for having the opportunity, but also I'm so thankful for um, Netflix and the circle being so uh, gracious about including gay people yeah. in the reality space and not, and not filmed in a dramatic way where people are fighting and um, uh, having unnecessary drama and, you know, doing things that just in 10 yeah, years later, you're going to yeah, look yeah. back and be like, I don't really want that image for myself. Absolutely. Absolutely. A few of my friends that live here in Atlanta, actually, uh, Netflix just sent them gifts for um, their Valentine's Day for being uh, fathers. Um, surprisingly, I don't know how that all happened, but Netflix has really been showing up, you know, for the community, you know. Yeah, and I, sure. I I really appreciate just being able to see that on screen and off screen. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. So what's next for you? Like, what do you have going on? I know you said you just you you graduating and all that. What's next? Um. My main focus right now is just uh, finishing up school. Um. Mm -hmm. Hustling up to buy my fiance a house. Well, we're gonna buy the house together. Mm -hmm. Um. We're going to eventually start planning our wedding and um, planning to be fathers in a couple of years. Um, surrogacy, it just takes a very long time. So we are putting our ducks in a row to get those things lined up. Um, I'm working on a couple of projects right now. I'm still trying to build my own television show up um, with a studio. Mm -hmm. And I'm living life. You know, I'm going to be doing a lot of traveling this year. Okay. Um, super excited about that, to see the world. And I'm really just living in the moment. You know, I'm really, really living in the moment. Um, I'm I'm in no rush to show up again on reality TV. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in no rush. Uh, if it comes, it comes. But other than that, I'm just living and working. If you could have your uh, another reality show outside of the ones you had on Apple uh, TV, what would, the, what would it be about? Like, what other show would I be on that's current? Or like if you had your own show, like what would it be? Oh, it would be oh, it would be shampoo poppy mobile detailing. Okay. But on Netflix. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but on Netflix. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I want to read this comment. Uh this is from Light Where it says seeing positive role models represent uh, represented 
um, in the various communities was so refreshing. It's real. It's not a put on. It's uh, it's not cliche. It's just genuinely human. Um, and people are just sending you a lot of love in the comment section um, just for being here and everything. So I want to make sure I say that stuff. Sorry to read everybody's comments. Um, but I just definitely wanted to like dive into this with you because again, like when I saw you, I was like, I love him from like the first part of the show. I didn't even know what you were gonna do or whatever, but your person I just exuded like what a person that I just like, like who I would love to know or whatever. And so when I hit you up and you hit me back, I was like, Oh god, he's really gonna hit me back. <laughs> wow, thank you so much. Honestly, that means yeah. the world. That that really, really means the world to me. You don't even know. You don't even know being unsure and, and then hearing you say that like thank you from the bottom of my heart honestly yeah no problem man um do you have any last words for the people that are here or are people going to see this later on um i think how i would close this out is y'all just just be you if it's one thing i and i know it's so cliche and i know so many people say it but there is so much power in just showing up as your authentic self and maybe it's going to take an experience to for it to for it to be proved proven to yourself. I know um, the circle was my proven experience, but just be you. It's more than enough. And as long as you are keeping yourself at the center of everything you're doing, everything else will follow. And um, love yourself. Keep yourself first and everything. And everything, you know, I've been talking to so many people, um, not so much about just like mental health, but just in general with life and just uh, not being afraid of figuring out who you are and not being afraid of like stepping out and taking a chance on yourself. Um, I did that. I took a chance on myself. I'm from Jersey. Mm -hmm. I'm from Trenton. I'm, you know, I didn't grow up privileged. I literally planned my move to L.A. in 30 days. I came oh. home. I, this is a true story. I, I wish my fiance was here. I came home. And I told my fiance, I said, like, I don't know if it's God, I don't know if it's spirit, but something is telling me I need to get up and I need to move to LA. I was like, Jeff, we need to get up and we need to go. My fiance, and this isn't about love, but trust my vision so much that he gave up his life, friends, family. Luckily he was working from home, but he, he would have given up his job if he had to. Mm -hmm. And we, we packed up all of our stuff in our little apartment when we was living in the projects. We left to LA, uh, the circle notified me maybe two months into living in LA mm -hmm. and look at me now. That's And that's all because I just took a chance on myself. So, mm -hmm. and, and, and remember to anybody who is out there who wants to apply, I had one picture on my Instagram, but I showed I was, up in my audition. I was shocked when you told me that. I showed up as myself in that audition video and that was all that they needed. Mm -hmm. So I just want people to just not be afraid to believe in yourself and take chances on yourself and just be you, just be you. What's your What's your love story with you and your uh, fiance? Oh, he slid in my DMs. That was, that was, <laughs> yeah, like why? Why would? <laughs> like he slid in my DMs. Um, okay. he literally was just like, "Hey, can I take you out for ice cream?" Mm. And then I messed around and fell in love, and here we are six years later. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Well, so I, don't, I don't have any more questions for you. So thank you. Uh, um, I, I, you can, I, I can I read the comments? Huh? Can I read some of the comments so I can sure. just say thank you to the people that are here? Sure, sure, sure. Um, we have this one here. It says, me and my daughter went back and forth with who would win. Jazz with Sam. Hi, Miss Shu um, Kelly. <laughs> hold on. Jamie B. Um, I didn't like Brett or Big Brother, and I didn't like him on the circle. And no, that was gonna say nobody likes Brett. Um, Jamie B says, "Who on the cast do you still keep in contact with?" Everybody. I literally contact everyone. 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 Uh, hold on, I'm scrolling through because oh, it's a lot of share. Um, I love Chaz. So ready for this interview. I'm up to the top. Okay, let me go down. Okay. Um, y'all, y'all drop y'all's comments in the in the comment section. Um, uh, not out for I scream smooth. <laughs> the devil. He's a uh, chat. He's a keeper, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fact. 
That's a smooth ass man. Yeah, I have to be hard for me to read the comments while I'm doing interviews because I'm like, let me, I want to be focused on this. Um, Pink Dama said, when is the wedding? Uh, we're going to have a baby first before the wedding. So I'll let you know mm -hmm. when the wedding is as soon as this baby come, which won't be yeah. for a couple years. <laughs> are, you, are you going to document that? Yeah, uh, probably. Yeah, probably. I think we should. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. There are so many people who want that and would love to see that. Uh, two of my friends, they were on, what was that show on MTV? But they um, they did that with their daughter that they had. They now have two kids now. Um, but they did that on MTV where they adopted their daughter on MTV. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I probably will, uh, but I, I won't. Um, we'll see. Even if you do it like on your own, you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then whenever you're ready to release it, I would definitely say do it because there's some people in the community who want to do it. They don't know what it looks like, what the process is. Like, yeah, it would be definitely something that people will be able to watch to just see what that looks like. Yeah, people want to be parents and they don't know what, what that comes from. I'm, I'm a I'm a second grade school teacher. And let me tell you something. Kids are a lot. Um, I know having your own kid is very different, but kids are a lot. You know, yeah. they need so much and there's so much that you have to do with them. And there's so much attention that you have to give them. It takes off your life. Like my kids, I feel like they're my kids. Yeah. So. You know, for the sake of like uh, people out there, not even just in the gay community, but the people who... Uh, want to go through surrogacy and don't know i would do it for that purpose yeah 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 absolutely i would definitely do it for that purpose um for sure all right shy town says great interview and i'm going to watch the show shout out to shy town not your girl so, yeah people were asking stuff earlier but i can't scroll all the way back up to the top. oh okay oh, that's no problem uh, said, hey i love the show i can't wait until this next season he played a good game thank uh, you Eighty two said, I love the circle. This is going to be awesome. Um, I know it's going to be awesome. My God. I'm excited. This should be a great interview. This is all from the beginning. Okay. Um, hey, all. I'm so excited for this live. This past few days have been so rough. Pray for MSU. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me see. Was there any more questions? JBB said, I love Sam, but Chaz was robbed. <laughs> um, I love you, Jamie. Sam, Sam won fair and square. <laughs> she won fair and square. I love you, man. <laughs> Thank you for that support. I appreciate you. I'm trying to see if I can find it. Oh, they were asking about Marvin. Do you keep in contact with Marvin? Because you kept saying you, Sam, and um, you, Sam, and Raven. I'm missing. Raven. And Raven, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I still talk to Marvin. Okay. I just got off the phone with Oliver last night. Okay. He in Mexico right now. <laughs> yeah, Oliver Oliver is a, an amazing person. I, I don't know Oliver personally, but I've seen Oliver around a lot before the um, circle. Oliver's yeah. an amazing person. Love him. Uh, let's see if I have any more new ones. It said, hope to see more, see more from Chaz. Good. Uh, could never get tired of you. Thank you, Light Warrior. Thank you, everybody who's been dropping comments and watching the, li um, the live YouTube interview. I'm sure it'll be posted after. I appreciate everybody here. Thank you so much for watching and tuning in. Shout out to you. You are amazing. <laughs> you you are literally incredible. Look, I was I was inboxing all y'all. Like, I need to interview like everybody during the season. I'm like, after it's over with, can I talk to all y'all? So. Absolutely, man. Like, and I appreciate that. You know, it's the support is amazing. And, you know, whatever I can do to support the show, I'm definitely going to do it. Whatever you guys got going on, I'm down to support. Um, I enjoyed you guys this season. This has been my favorite season out of all the seasons I've watched. This has been my favorite season. I literally would get up before work and watch like every all four episodes, tired as hell going to work. So, wow. <laughs> absolutely, man. Thank you so much. Honestly, thank you so, so much. I, I had so much fun and I cannot wait to do this again. I know we will. 
Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to keep in contact with you for real. Absolutely. All right. I'm going to end this. Don't go anywhere. And um, y'all, make sure you guys comment in the comment section um, if you guys have anything you want to say. Um, if it's something y'all want me to send, I'll send it. But comment in the comment section. Um, uh, thank you guys. So that was amazing. All that. Thank you guys for supporting me. Uh, we're going to get out of here and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, y'all. Did it, I did it, I I I did it, I did it, I I I did it, 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 you did it, I did it, you did it, I did it.